Oh my god, hey! Welcome back to my theatre-themed YouTube channel. My name is Mickey Joe, and I am obsessed with all things theatre. I am a professional theatre critic and a content creator here on YouTube, and today I have set myself a festive theatre-going challenge to see how many different pantomime performances I can see in just one day. What you're hearing behind me is the sound of the audience for the 10 a.m. performance of Cinderella at the Lyric Hammersmith. I'm here in Hammersmith this morning. It's about quarter to 10 uh, here to start my day. I had to wake up super early to get here and I had multiple train and underground disasters on the way here. So not here quite as early as I would like, but Cinderella is going to be the first pantomime of the day. Obviously, <laughs> being me, had to start with Cinderella. Had to be on brand. So we're gonna try and see three different pantomimes at three different locations in one day. Americans, I know you don't necessarily know what pantomime is. Over the course of today, we're gonna try and learn as much as we can about pantomime. And I'm gonna tell you, um, and I'm gonna talk about each show as I see it, hopefully, if I make it to all three. So, excuse me, let's do this. Aha, uh -huh. I'm letting the school group go in. They're all wearing tiny high-vis vests, it's very cute. Um, this is my breakfast. It's a Cafe Nero classic mince pie. Mmm. Mm. Mm. This is not my favorite pastry in the world, but the mince pie filling, very nice. We're going to, I'm going to make it my side quest today to review as many seasonal eats and beverages I would like to have had a hot chocolate by now, but I wasn't sure if I'd have enough time. So I'm going to go in and see if the Lyric are doing hot chocolate. We may swap to mulled wine later. We'll see how we feel. So this is the Lyric Hammersmith. That's the entrance over there. I was just in front of. But this is the building up here. I'm not sure what this is. I think it's probably easier to work out when it's illuminated. Is it like, I'm seeing yellow, is it a penguin? It kind of looks slightly pink. Looks a little like a, is it a Christmas dolphin? What's going on here? Is it just, is it just a random swirl? I have seen this before. I really ought to know. I, at the moment I can't tell you. I'm gonna go inside now because my hands are getting very cold. This is helpful to me and potentially to other theater girls as well. These are the timings for Cinderella. Uh, so it should be out. Uh, oh no, the act is gonna start at 11.15, but it's two hours and 10 minutes. So we should be out by 10 past 12, giving us plenty of time to make it to the next show, but more on that later. Pantomime 1, done! Cinderella at the Lyric Hammersmith. Uh -oh. uh, it is now just after midday and I am heading over to Stratford East is where my next pantomime is. Those are the traffic lights. I'm gonna stay there. I'm getting strange looks from people. Is it because I'm filming myself in public? Is it because of the glasses? It could be the glasses. It's entirely possible. Um, my <laughs> So I'm in Hammersmith right now, which, if you don't know, West London. I'm heading over to Stratford East, which, as suggested by the name, East London. And my toxic trait is I tend to think that any two stations on the underground must be 20 minutes apart always. And that is not the case. So I need to make sure that I actually go and get on an underground train right now, get to where I'm going, and then see how much time I have to grab lunch, etc. I still haven't had a hot chocolate, and I was planning on having like five today. Um, so that's, that's upsetting. They also did mulled wine at the venue, but it's, it's a little early. Although, schools performance with me and a bunch of schools groups, I was sat at the back as I specifically requested because I don't want to be a tall person sitting in front of kids, basically. So, at the back with many enthusiastic children. I'm going to get on the tube now. 
took the Hammersmith and City line to Paddington, changing here for the Elizabeth line, London locals may be screaming into your internet cable devices uh, watching this, saying that is not the most direct way to get to Stratford. And it, I don't, there's not a lot in it, but it's probably not. I am willing to take longer to get there simply to ride the Elizabeth line and not to have to get on the Circle or the District or the Central. I will go out of my way to avoid them and that is what I'm doing. I could have got a white hot chocolate at the Costa I just walked past but again I would rather get where I need to go and then get a beverage. Like Costa's everywhere. They'll have a Costa in Stratford. I am, I am confident of that much. Can I walk this way to the Elizabeth line? Yes. Yes, I'm saying yes. Also, I've run out of hands to hold things because I'm still holding this program in the hopes that it justifies the glasses. <laughs> so while I approach the Elizabeth line, let me give you your first lesson on pantomimes. So the first one we saw this morning was Cinderella and they do tend to be based on fairy tales. Next up we have Jack and the Beanstalk. So think Disney adjacent and it is the Disney-fied version of these fairy tales. Uh, more that than Brothers Grimm. Very family friendly, very child focused. Definitely geared towards being family shows. But as with this morning's, with a couple of adult references sprinkled in there that will go right over their heads. I believe the original pantomime was Mother Goose. I saw two different Mother Geese last year. Uh, one touring down in Brighton, the other one in Hackney. This year I don't know if we'll see any. Less geese around this year, less mother geese. The hallmark of many pantomimes in the UK is celebrity casting, but not at the Lyric Hammersmith. Here we have authentic theatre actors. As our dame, we had Emmanuel Aquafo from the recent smash hit uh, play for Black Boys, which is coming back next year. I'll explain to you what a dame is later, if you are confused. Uh, we also had Jodie Jacobs, recently seen in Kathy and Stella Solve a Murder, which is hopefully coming back in the new year. Damien James was playing Prince Henry, seen in The Curious Case of Benjamin Button at Southwark Playhouse. And Cinderella, the titular role, was played by Tilly Labelle Yengo, uh, who has appeared in Everybody's Talking About Jamie at the Apollo Theatre. This is a fun little detail here as well. The market carts seen on stage and the dressing tables are built fully from recycled set materials from past shows. That's very Lyric Hammersmith panto vibes. is your PSA that the Elizabeth line splits at Whitechapel and if you want to go to Stratford you have to be on the Shenfield line and not the Abbey Wood and I never take the Elizabeth line further than Tottenham Court Road so I forgot that but now like Effie White in the second act of Dreamgirls I am changing. Hello. Okay so I've made it to Stratford it's just before one o'clock so that took me about 45 minutes. I'm gonna go ahead and say that, that that could have been faster to change onto the Elizabeth line, or at the very least, takes about the same amount of time. I'm, I was about to say, I'm not entirely sure where the theater is. I've just seen another group of many school children in high visibility jackets. So that could be the audience for my next pantomime. I do have about an hour and I wanna get lunch first. I'm in the market for a festive sandwich like a specifically Christmas themed sandwich. I know Subway is doing one and there's a Subway right there. Pret is probably doing one as well. Lots of places probably are. Um, but I'm gonna try my luck with a festive sub melt and see, see what that's like. Verdict on the Subway Christmas sandwich, which was called the VI Brie sub melt and it had like bacon and brie and like an onion relish, which was the star of the sandwich. Now they used to do like a turkey and cranberry sauce thing years ago. Haven't seen that in a while. Bring that one back, Subway. Um, but I enjoyed, I enjoy, I would like, I would like a turkey element. I saw that Greg's were doing one as well, which I was also intrigued by. Also passed a Costa, so got uh, first hot chocolate of the day. This is a small white hot chocolate. I think the only coffee shop to do a white chocolate hot chocolate. Mm. So good, so good, so good. I do not drink coffee, so this is all I've got to sustain me. And it's festive, so there you go. Uh, heading over to where I think Theatre Royal Stratford East is for the second pantomime of the day. Shout out to the nice barista at Costa who liked my glasses and asked what I was doing today. And so I said, I'm seeing three back-to-back -back pantomime performances across London, which is not 
strictly true, but more on that later. Um, and he said, wow, you must really love theatre. And yes, yes I do. So we have a little bit of time before the next one. Uh, so let me finish telling you about the pantomime at Lyric Hammersmith. Now I saw their panto last year, it was Jack of the Beanstalk, this year Cinderella. There are many of the pantos around the UK, uh, panto being short for pantomime, by the way, are produced by a couple of very big pantomime producers who kind of circulate them around. For example, Carrie Hope Fletcher was in Sleeping Beauty last year in Canterbury. This year she's in Sleeping Beauty in Crawley in uh, Sussex. Yes. Uh, and it's, it's going to be the same panto, basically. It just kind of, they tour them around and circulate them between different places. Um, but the lyric Hammersmith is specifically for them. That is not part of uh, Big Panto, as I like to call them. And I believe that that is the same for Theatre Royal Stratford East. I'll find out uh, upon some further investigation. Uh, Hackney Empire is another one that do their own panto every year. This is Theatre Royal Stratford East. Behind me, that's a statue of legendary pioneering theatre maker Joan Littlewood. But the lyric panto I enjoyed, I'd, I'd, I'd call it a very wholesome pantomime. Partly because it doesn't feel quite as corporate as some of the bigger ones, uh, but also because I just love their approach to casting. There is always a lot of diversity in their casting. It always feels very uh, much of its area. Pantomimes like to refer to the local area and they always talk about Hammersmith a lot. They did an audience sing-along at the end when we were all singing Glory, Glory Hammersmith. And so I, there, there's something nice about that. I would give it three Christmas trees because it was fun and it was charming. It kind of fell a little short of being laugh out loud. Hilarious, but it's, it's very sweet. It's one of the sweeter pantomimes of the festive season. My highlights remain Emmanuel and Jodie. Jodie was a terrific villain playing Flesh Creep last year in Jack and the Beanstalk. Lovely as the fairy this year. And Emmanuel is such a great dame uh, with a nice modern flavor, which I enjoy. I will say, while I'm still reviewing, Cinderella was a bit mean to her stepsisters at the beginning. She was playing pranks on them. And like, I am nothing on this channel if not a critique of all things Cinderella or Cinderella adjacent. And I just feel like we need to establish the wholesomeness of her character. She needs to be earnest and deserving. And I know, I know, she was a little bit mean to her stepsisters. I'm not sure how I felt about that. I know it's a pantomime and it's not like the most sincere version of that story, but even so. This is completely unrelated and interrupting my thoughts on the Larry Hammersmith panto, but I've just seen a Mean Girls poster in the cinema that I'm standing opposite. Also, the Snowball Doughball Christmas tree at Pizza Express. I don't, I don't have dinner plans for this evening, so that's yeah, tempting. This white hot chocolate, meanwhile, I know you're curious. I'm enjoying it. I always like the first half of this beverage more than the second half. I don't think it cools down very well, but I do like the sweetness. I have an enormous sweet tooth and there is really no such thing as too sweet. Mm. So, enjoying the Costa White Hot Chocolate. Something else interesting about pantomimes is the music that they use, the songs that they use. Uh, now, some pantos use completely original music, but largely you will hear pop songs in pantomimes, often with rewritten lyrics. Um, and these can be from uh, yesteryear, sort of crowd-pleasing faves, or they can be from the year that's just been really like zeitgeisty stuff. And I'm wondering what's going to be the big, most used panto song of the year. Last year I heard a lot of um, Lizzo's About Damn Time. In a minute, I'm gonna need a sentimental man or woman to pump me up. And they rewrote the lyrics uh, to take out the swearing. But all of the kids sang along because they know it from TikTok. And so the kids just sang the original with the swearing, ironically. Um, but any popular TikTok songs are becoming big in pantomime. So uh, the lyric just now, we had the at the body shop. I know none of the words. But we also had September. Like, do you remember 21st night of September? We also had um, Mamba number five during like a princess speed dating sequence. Sure. Oh, another song I've heard already, Taylor Swift, Antihero. I feel like we could hear that. Cinderella sang that, actually, when she was feeling low in the second act, but I feel like we could hear that from a lot of villains. Last year, villains were singing Billie Eilish's Bad Guy, and they may still, but I think we may also hear some Tay-Tay this festive season. I think anything Barbie movie is going to be quite big 
this year. Now we had a dance, dance the night away in the overture of the lyric one, but they didn't use it in the actual show, even in the ball scene. Instead they did everybody dance now, so I don't know. I don't know what that's about, but we will see uh, what they use in Jack and the Beanstalk. I think it's probably about time to finish my white hot chocolate and go inside. In fact, I have more time than I thought. It's only 25 past one. This is a 2 p.m. show. I thought this was going to be a bit of a rush, but this was fine. This was fine. Pantos tend to be quite short, usually. Uh, so that's something to bear in mind if you are planning to do back-to-back -back pantos. Usually people will just go and see the pantomime local to them. Not everyone is a theatrical lunatic like I am. But I'm wondering if I have enough time to go and get like a sweet treat from the shopping center I just passed through. Or I'm trying to remember, I've been to this theater twice before. Or maybe only once. No, I think I've been here twice. I've, I've been here before and I think they do like nice bakery things. I feel like they'll have something Christmassy. The Lyric did and I didn't get anything from there and I felt guilty about it afterwards. So maybe, maybe tiny people in my camera. While we wait and finish our white hot chocolate together, let's talk panto tropes. Um, so I might explain these more as I go through the day because it's a lot to kind of explain to you. But let's see if the Lyric Hammersmith filled a bingo card worth of panto tropes. Let's play panto bingo. So we did have a, oh yes it is, oh no it isn't, call and response moment with the school children in the audience. We also had a, uh, let's sing a song so we don't get scared of the ghost. It was a medieval ghost for a little bit of flavor. Uh, and then we'll have to sing it again then, won't we? So that's two things. We had an audience sing along, that's three. We also had audience shout outs uh, that people could send ahead of time for like birthdays and shouting out the school groups who were in. We also had uh, audience interaction. Someone went up on the stage to try and crack an egg on the bottom of the dame played by Emmanuel. And we also had a sidekick character who spoke with the audience. He was a gerbil who could only speak gerbil uh, by going meep 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 meep. But apparently so could the audience because he could speak to us but not the other characters on stage, which was a challenge. That was a choice from Vicky Stone to set herself that narrative challenge. Uh, however, he taught the audience how to do a specific call and response every time he arrived on stage. That's very much a panto trope. So we'll call that six for six. Yay for panto bingo. Now I'm actually gonna go inside. Okay, I have been inside. I have been to the box office. I got my program and my ticket. They're not opening the bar area until like 4 p.m. today because they don't open it for schools groups because famously uh, the schools groups do not tend to consume much of the interval wine, uh, though I'm sure the teachers want to. I can attest to that. I used to work in education for five years. I never taught young children. I never got to go to any pantomimes, probably because I was teaching GCSE maths to 16 to 18 year olds, but that is not the point. Um, I'm gonna go and see if I can find a sweet treat somewhere. I've already had a mince pie and the ones at Costa looked very much the same to the ones at Nero. I don't know if they have the same supplier. I don't know. Uh, they looked the same and I'm, I'm in the market for something equally Christmassy but a little bit different. A word about these schools performances as well. Sometimes they are bookable by members of the public. There will just be a note to say there's going to be a lot of schools groups in um, and sometimes they are off sale but big thanks to the team at Theatre Royal Stratford East for letting me come to this one. As I said earlier I specifically said like put me in literally the back row so I'm just like not in the way, not blocking anyone's view um, and also I don't want to seem like the weird guy in the Christmas glasses hanging out with the school kids or literally put me in a box. I literally said feel free to put me in a box which no one has gone for thus far but I think it would be quite fun. Um, I've gone the wrong way. I'm just, I'm just talking to you. I'm going to fully circle around the block and go back the way I came. I thought I was doing something clever. I absolutely was not. Now I'm just a lost man in Christmas glasses. I've been making all kinds of wrong food decisions since I arrived in Stratford because I just went to Greg's and I got this Christmas Christmas tree biscuit and maybe I'll love it but when I was already like paying with my card I then saw a Christmas cake slice that looked really nice I love a Christmas cake and also I took a look at their Christmas sandwich which is called the ultimate Christmas cracker or something like that and it has like chicken and stuffing that is the sandwich I should have had for lunch today and I what did I do I, I sold it out for a little bit of brie and bacon and I don't even like that much what am I doing? Honestly, what am I doing with my day? It's because I'm rushing. I don't need to rush until after this show. Then I probably need to rush. Okay, this is gingerbread. Plot twist. And you know, it's fine. It's a bit dry. It's chocolate. You can't, you can't go too wrong with chocolate. Now that I'm looking at it, the tree is slightly out of proportion. It's 
it's possible I'm overthinking this biscuit. I'm back at the theatre. The school group has arrived. And so I'm going to follow in after them, like the Tin Man, Lion and Scarecrow, entering the witch's castle to go and save Dorothy. Mm. Panto 2, Jack and the Beanstalk at Theatre Royal Stratford East. Done. Or should I say Splatford, set in the fictional town of Splatford. Um, now legging it to Splatford International, AKA the actual train station, Stratford International. Um, it's getting dark, uh, but it's time for me to get a train to a different county. Next show is not even in London. It's at seven, so I've got like two and a half hours to get there but I'm heading over to Canterbury uh, to the Marlowe Theatre in Canterbury to go and see their production of Aladdin I'm not convinced I'm going the right way so I'm going to put you down and check my phone the train is in just under 20 minutes I'm apparently just over 10 minutes away from Stratford International so at this point I'm realizing I don't think I've ever been to this station before I don't know where it is I assume it's not connectable if I just tap in at Stratford and try and find my way around from there, on a map, it looks like it's different. Also, Aaron is already here. Thus far today, he's not been with me because he's been working. And I've had my replacement companion, this pantomime goose that I got last year at Mother Goose that I was going to show you earlier, but I forgot to. But he has been my companion thus far. Uh, but hopefully, magically, I'm gonna make it to the station and I'm gonna find Aaron all at the same time. My messages to him aren't currently sending and I don't know if I can make this train it's all suddenly become very stressful as we attempt to travel to show three of the Pantothon. Pray for me, Panto people. I'm just calling Aaron to be like, I think he's already here. I'm like, I'm near a giant fish. Are you near the giant fish? This I think is Stratford International. I've got like eight minutes until the train. We made it to Canterbury, everyone. Look who I found. Hello. I've replaced the goose with Aaron James. I have a goose. a goose. No, I had a, I had the pantomime goose with me as a mascot in your absence. Because oh, I get lonely. Um, but yes, we're at Canterbury West because Canterbury has two stations. I thought we were going that way. People are going this way. I'm going to follow the crowd and see where they take me. Plot twist. It was not an exit, it was an underpass. I'm right that the town is that way. I think this is the station I've arrived at before. I've never been here before. Probably. Have you Ah, well, I'm going to take you to the Marlowe Theatre in Canterbury. And I'm, I'm fairly certain I know where I'm going. It's about half past five now. Uh, the show is at seven, not 7.30. Check those start times if you're going to see a pantomime because... Pantos have wild schedules. They have wild schedules because they're geared towards family audiences often. So sometimes they will do an earlier curtain time um, to benefit the younger theatre goers in the audience. Although this will be an older audience than the two that I've had thus far today. Funny story about my 2 p.m. show, which I will tell you more about. I realize I haven't said anything about it. Um, I thought I had the entire dress circle to myself because again, I emailed specifically, said, put me in the back, put me in the box. And until like two minutes before the show started, I'm the only person sat in the dress circle, but I'm sat in row E. And so I'm like, if it's just me, <laughs> it's weird, it seemed weird, but then five full rows of um, school-aged school children arrived and joined me in the dress circle. But the matinee were like really young primary school children. And then I think, I think it was like secondary school vibes in the second one. They were a little bit more aloof. But as for the show itself, I'm now walking down the street, so you're going to get very variable lighting of car headlights and the occasional street lamp. Um, but I enjoyed it. It was probably, it's probably a two Christmas trees out of five for me, oh. personally. Yeah, I just, 
I, I like Jack and the Beanstalk. I probably prefer Jack and the Beanstalk as a pantomime concept to a Cinderella because I think there's more for us to learn. They started with uh, like a protest moment and I was like, oh, we're going to draw parallels with like Just Stop Oil or something. That's very brave. And then it wasn't really because they were just protesting the giant who was taking all of their replenishing mud and the, the, then the giant's assistant flesh creep is going around collecting exorbitant rent you know that we're in a housing crisis right now in this country because both pantomimes today have had a big focus on like on the antagonists have consistently it's been about rent it's been about rental payments every single time so there's a strong anti-capitalist theme emerging where this one struggled and you know it's not that i want everything to be generic and I, I, I do want to praise a pantomime for standing alone, but the original songs, because it wasn't using like pop songs, it was not a jukebox pantomime, it had original songs, but I just don't know if the original songs were strong or compelling or lyrically decent enough uh, to, to, really, to really do their job. I think that was where I struggled with this one. I enjoyed some of the cast, Nathan Kiley, doing a great job giving you like a drag queen version of a panto dame. This is a great opportunity for me to tell you about pantomime dames. So historically in pantomime, many of the roles usually played by performers of different genders. The principal boy will often be played historically by a female performer and the pantomime dame character that's like Dame Trot in Jack and the Beanstalk and uh, Mother Goose in Mother Goose and Widow Twanky in yeah. Aladdin and the stepmother in Cinderella will often be played by a male performer in drag, which kind of like, I mean, our understanding of uh, the broader spectrum of gender is evolving and both of the pantomimes I have seen today have been uh, trans and non-binary inclusive in their casting, which is good. But uh, yeah, this is also the pantomime dame uh, being played in drag is also a historical feature of the pantomime. And it's not even, it's not really a drag queen thing. It's not necessarily a queer thing. Increasingly yeah. again, it has been. And this afternoon's was an example that felt more like a drag queen interpretation where Nathan was really leaning into like the feminine wiles of the character. But sometimes it's very much just like local bloke in a ridiculous dress, uh, dressed like a teapot. Uh, with a very low voice, so it's it's it, it, it's a whole historic thing, and yeah, audiences tend to because we've seen pantomime dames for so long, they don't really read into the gender politics or the gender theory behind all of that. So on paper, it probably sounds a little bit regressive, but I don't know that that really enters anyone's consciousness, if that makes sense. Also, we're in Canterbury lovely town of Canterbury. Um, you can't really see much of it because it's dark, but we do have this lovely historic stone structure with pretty Christmas lights. Do you have any preference on where we go for food? Because that is our next mission. We have like an hour and a half just under until the show. Is that, whatever's on fire over there, is that meant to be on fire? Are those like lights? I think it's fine. I just see flames. I think it's Perhaps liberal. Fun. It's just suspiciously close to a tree. Anyway, um, we have like hour and 20 until the show actually starts so we don't have a lengthy sit down dinner time um, but we can grab food somewhere I have been eating exclusively festive themed food today yeah. whether I'll be able to find anything festive themed for dinner I do not know we'll see I'll update you accordingly this is also a pretty classic example of British high street Christmas lights very pretty very nice this is one of the subtler examples actually they're keeping it quite classy in canterbury with a theme and an aesthetic it looks very nice well done well done people of canterbury you've done a lovely job this festive season this is the centerpiece of the high street christmas lights and the statue of geoffrey chaucer looking looking relatively exhausted to be honest but he wrote a lot of canterbury tales so you know, and we're in Canterbury. I've literally, it took me saying that on camera to make that connection. Good job, me. It's been a long day of pantomime. A very pretty side street and a glimpse of, I believe that's big old cathedral over there. Look at that. How lovely.
we are just leaving the cozy club where we had dinner where i did have a christmas themed dinner i had it was i think it was called the cozy christmas pie it was like chicken and stuffing with vegetables and mash and pasta i love a parsnip and little little like mini pig and blanket and a bit of stuffing it was delicious and you had a risotto situation mm -hmm. okay. and we both had cherry bakewell cocktails yeah which were very nice. Love a cozy club dinner. And now heading over to the Marlowe Theatre for Aladdin. Now, this is actually their press night performance tonight. The other ones were just random school's performances where I emailed and said, could I please come along and sit in the back row? This one uh, was an actual, an actual opening kind of a press situation. Um, have I finished telling you about the Stratford East one. We didn't do Panto Bingo, so they did have shout outs to the audience. They threw <laughs> sweets the first time of the day. We had our first It's Behind You of the day. Oh, we had a sidekick character teaching the audience to do a call and response. Uh, we had a regular cow. Wasn't a pantomime cow? First one had a pantomime cow, which is two people. One person does not a pantomime cow make, it just makes a cow in a pantomime, which is not the same. Um, a pantomime cow, I should explain is is a cow played by two people wearing the same costume one is the front legs one is the back legs um we're up to four panto tropes i'm sure i can think of two more for panto bingo for stratford east i mean we had all the regular things we had a dame they had a beanstalk that grew out of the floor and then jack climbed it that's not a panto trope necessarily but it is impressive not quite as impressive as when it kind of came up through the london palladium last year in their version oh we had a little bit of the oh no it isn't oh yes it is so that counts as well and then there was a sing-along so i'll give them panto bingo for that but it was a sing-along of an original song which is bold i didn't hate that one that was probably one of the better songs but you've got to teach the audience and then encourage participation as well and it's interesting because like i said these were older children uh like teens i think and they were a bit indifferent to participating up until the point that the sweets came out and then they went like rabid. It was like, as soon as sweets were offered, they were fully involved and committed. I think this is the way to the Marlowe or I'm just taking you down it. Do I remember this? I don't know. I see the cathedral. Better view of big old cathedral. Having made the trek out to Canterbury, I can now just about see the Marlowe over there, but I have <laughs> nearly got us uh, lost on the way to the theatre because though I've been here three times before did not recognize the layout in the dark and couldn't remember where it was but it's over there would be a shame to make it this far out of London and Americans uh, unless I've edited a map into this video feel free to have a look at a map and see where we are in relation to where I was this afternoon uh, but it would be a shame to be late for Aladdin because we're wandering around Canterbury now I remember this from last time, the Marlowe Theatre always do great panto merchandise. You can buy these uh, light up flashing uh, swords and things that, it, that, believe it or not, is also a part of British pantomime culture to have just the flashing light up things. Uh, you can tell this one's for boys because it's blue and it's got a dinosaur on it. <laughs> you can also get the programs, obviously, as shown here. We've just collected ours from the press desk. There is also, and I'm obsessed with this, a collaboration between Lush and the Marlowe Theatre for this, it's the magic lamp. I'm obsessed with this. Apologies, I realized I took these off in the restaurant. I am now once again festive. Say what you just said. I just wondered whether he'd been wearing them for the whole show. I said I've been wearing them for the whole day. I have been committing to the Christmas bit. Do they not like, affect your viewing experience of the show? I have zero peripheral vision, but I can see the show itself just fine. Look, I can see, well, you can I see my eyes. That I can't see. That I can't. Listen, none of the pantomimes I've seen today have been immersive, <laughs> so it's fine. Now, before I put my camera away for the performance, this is the stage here at the Marlowe Theatre in Canterbury. There is a buzz in the auditorium. I have been lacking today because I have been an addition to some school trips, but that's fine because I still got to see some lovely pantomimes. Uh, now we are seeing Aladdin. Third show of the day, third different story. This is the, per the program there. You may recognize West End star Courtney Bowman. You may recognize Kevin Clifton and a bunch of exciting others as well. I'm very excited to see Alistair So in this as well. I'm excited to see Ben Roddy returning Panto Dame. I'm excited to see Aladdin. This was one of my favorite pantomimes last year when they did Sleeping Beauty here at the Marlowe. So lots to live up to. My name is Aladdin, your highness. 
Your wish is our commando, master. Show me! We're in the interval. We are. Everybody, are you enjoying your first Marlowe uh, Theatre Pantomime experience, Aaron James? It's fun. We have themed cocktails here in the interval. We have the Gilded Lamp Mocktail and the Three Wishes Cocktail, which we're about to try. Organic cocktail reaction. It's nice. It's nice. Yeah. This one has just so much edible glitter, and I feel like my insides are going to be so sparkly after I drink this. Instant five Christmas tree out of five Christmas tree. Loved it, had a great time. We'll tell you more in the future. And that's happening right now. We are a few weeks in the future. You literally cannot see my eyes whatsoever. What angle does my head have to be at for you to see my eyes through these Christmas glasses? There we go, that's better. Okay, so thoughts on the Canterbury pantomime. Cantomime, perhaps. Uh, like I said, instant five Christmas tree out of five Christmas tree reaction. I love the Canterbury pantomime, the Marlowe Theatre pantomime. I think what always charms me, aside from it just being like a really good pantomime that delivers on all of the necessary fronts, Ben Roddy, one of the best dames in the business, they always utilise their cast really well, like the celebrity cast members, like Kevin Clifton I thought was a really great panto villain and they gave him lots of dance opportunities because he's a former Strictly pro. Courtney Bowman could have been used more, I will say, that was probably the biggest like point of criticism from the Canterbury pantomime. They could have used Courtney Bowman more, not just for her vocal chops, but for her comedy, because she is so funny. Um, I really enjoyed Alistair So. I did, everyone in the cast did a fantastic job. Um, having made that joke about not all pantos, uh, about the pantos I'd seen that day not having been immersive, that one was, because they ran out into the audience and sprayed people with water pistols. We got soaked as it happens. Um, uh, they paid lovely tribute to the uh, show's long-standing musical director and kind of acknowledged him. You get a real strong sense of the community in that pantomime, and that's what I like. I love to visit a place that I know very little about and feel like that strong sense of community and how important that that annual pantomime is to that venue and to those people who go and see it every year. That is a theatre that clearly cherishes their pantomime, as, as so many of them do, but you, you felt the warmth of that. Circling back to the start of this sentence that got away from me, what really charmed me about this one is they used like contemporary musical theatre songs, like in a very campy way, but we had a little bit of a nod to Legally Blonde because at one point Aladdin sang literally just the one line, I'm doing this for love, and that was about it. Um, when they went to Agrabah, um, they basically were like, so let's go to Agrabah. After all, you gotta start somewhere, and then they did Gotta Start Somewhere from Back to the Future. There was also, in previous years, they've done a parody of The Producers, with their opening number. I think this one was um, the Morecambe and Wise song. And what's the Morecambe and Wise song? The Bring Me Sunshine, I think, mm -hmm. is what it was. That's that's in my head what I remember it being. Um, and like the Sam Ryder Eurovision song was in it when he was flying on the carpet, which was a pretty cool effect. Kinky but boots. Hmm? Kinky Boots. Kinky Boots. 
kinky boots they were like aladdin you can be whatever you want to be now because you have this magic ring and this magic lamp so you can be who you want to be seamless transition but i had a great time Great pantomime, um, lots of tropes in that as well, the same ones I've mentioned earlier on in this video. Um, but that was the three show Panto Day. I hope that you enjoyed coming along with me. I hope that everyone is having a lovely Christmas. If you celebrate Christmas, a lovely festive holiday season. I hope that you enjoyed this video. If you did, make sure to subscribe to my theater themed YouTube channel for lots more content coming between now and the very end of this year. I still have to recap all of the shows that I saw this year, talk about my highlights, talk about some of my disappointments, and of course, look forward to the most exciting shows coming in 2024. Make sure you're subscribed so you don't miss any of that content. I hope that everyone is staying safe and that you have a stagey day. Oh, before I go, uh, comment down below with the pantomime that you may have seen this year. If you're Americans who still have pantomime questions, I did not explain everything about them in this video, though I planned to comment your questions down below and the British people in the comment section will do our best uh, to explain them to you. But if you did go see a pantomime this year, tell us all about it in the comments down below. Now I really am done and I hope that everyone is staying safe and that you have a stagey day. For 10 more seconds, I'm Mickey Joe Theatre. Oh my god, hey. Thanks for watching. Have a stagey day. Subscribe! <laughs>